Well, we were living in the um, vacant Air Force flats at the end of Corboy Street, Wembley, and my mother had been left at 27 with uh, five children and had had a very hard life and a wonderful mother. And so when we got the information that the state housing had a home for us at Six Myriad Avenue in Innerloo, we were absolutely out of our minds. It was like a dream come true. And we moved there in 1950 and we had a three bedroom brick home and it had um, a chip bath heater, a copper and a ringer in the laundry and we had an open fireplace and a wooden stove. Well, moving into it was amazing considering what we had lived in previously and it was, was just like heaven, like <laughs> practically winning the lotto and because the boys had their own rooms and the girls had theirs and so it was pretty amazing, yeah. And it was such, because there was only four brick homes on either side of Muriel Avenue, apart from that it was all bush and so it was a very strong little community and each one, we knew everybody and you'd never had to lock up or anything like that, no. The road was complete sand, everything was sand apart from the home and so it took a, they're pretty good that they quickly sort of try and get the road put down just even for those four houses and the backyards were really good because they were large and um, so the boys could play, you know, kick around a football, we had a barbecue later on in life and so that was a big bonus because as you know now they're tiny, tiny. Well, the boys loved Jack Adder Lake, but it was only a swamp at that stage and a dairy with a big mulberry tree where everybody used to raid. So Jack Adder Lake was very important to the boys because they would come down, they had canoes made out of corrugated iron, and they, after they finished with it, they would sink it into the bulrushes so they didn't have to carry it home. And then when they went down again, they'd lift it up, drain it off, and use it once again. I remember those very clearly when they did move the road to the next block, still bush further on, there was Mr Campbell, he was the grocer shop and that was on the corner of Muriel and Thrall Street and then he was called Mr Campbell. We used to take the note list of what mum needed and he used to put everything together in a cardboard box and deliver it and he used to let people book it up if they were short of money. And then there was Mr Shackleton, the butcher, and he used to wear the white um, apron with the blue and white stripe, which they did in those days. And um, yeah, he was really important. The ice man came because we only had ice chests in those days, and they used to get one big block of ice to go in the top. And then the veggie man used to come with his truck, and then he'd ring a bell to let us all know he was there and he used to have all the vegetables and fruit all showing on either side of the truck and we would choose what we wanted. The milkman used to come in between 2 and 3 a.m. and they used to run with torches around their bellies and they used to, we used to leave a billy can on the uh, front gate and with the money and what we needed and he would come along in the Clydesdale horse because it was mainly horse and cart then and um, he would leave that and we'd negotiate with the money and the note. And the other one was the baker. The baker boy used to come at seven o'clock on a Saturday, no wrapped loaves or bread. He'd just have a basket over his arm and it was all unwrapped and never had cut bread. So you'd get like a solid loaf and poppy seeds loaf. Be prior to the hardware shop, it was a ceramic pottery place and um, and that was f there on both sides and then there was the um, and the hardware shop is still there virtually although Bunnings have overtaken it and then that was the corner where my brother went the little wooden school and next to that there used to be um, Rosie Sampalier I believe her name was that and she used to have the caravan and sell all the hamburgers, you know, for the young ones at that at, in the evening. And then after the wooden school went, Tunk and Judy Stampalier built 
the wine house and that was when it started to get a little bit more well cultivated whatever you'd say. Well at the end of our street as I say it was only one block and then um, we used to that was the highlight of the Guy Fawkes night and we used to weeks before if we had any pocket money we used to buy little Tom Thumbs crackers and we used to have the sparklers and the rockets and with the rockets we used to need a beer bottle and we used to pop the rocket in and hopefully that didn't tip over and shoot those and we used to buy, have the Guy Fawkes man-made you know so we'd hoist him up there hoist him up there and um, and then at the end of it when it was dying down we used to put potatoes in the ashes and pull them out put some cut the tops off put the butter in and spoon out the yeah so that was a highlight for us because there wasn't a great lot of you know interesting things going on because everyone knew each other um, that was a, a really big thing you know and now and then the next day we would go and we'd all look to see if there was any ones that didn't go off so we'd sort of get those and yeah rescue them well we're all very close and we used to um, the our mothers used, if they run short of something, we used to borrow and swap that all over. Um, the, all the ones my age, we used to walk on a Friday night down to Gildercliffe Street to the Baptist Church and all have a couple of hours down there. And on a Sunday morning, uh, Mr Watkins used to come, they wouldn't be allowed to do it now, but he used to come with his ute and we'd all pile in the back, we'd stand up the corner waiting, we'd all pile in and go off down to the, that was the only church at the time. And then we used to love having the Sunday school picnics at Mosman Park. And um, that was really good. And the anniversaries, all of us used to try and have a new dress to dress up. One thing I always remember when you look at today's life um, is the fact at church we had to wear hats and little gloves. It was very sort of formal. Today you can go as you know in anything. When they first built the church on the corner of Grant and King George Street, um, I was actually at the church when my husband was spent his first Sunday coming from Scotland. And his brother was the home missionary, which is like a training minister at the time. So when they built that and it was opened in late, 19, he came in 1956 and he, um, the church was built the church hall rather, they now have a church beside it, but they had the church hall and uh, I ran the girls club, which was uh, between girls between eight and 14. I had up to 30 of them at one stage. And what I used to teach them was, I was only 18 at the time, and I used to teach them um, songs, prayers, craft, and, um, tell them stories, biblical stories. And then at the same time, my husband-to-be, David, he was um, very high up in the Boys' Brigade in Scotland. So he started off the Boys' Brigade in the Presbyterian Inaloo Church. And he also, um, he had a lot of young boys all in their uniforms. And then um, he also trained the first colour party for the Boys' Brigade in Perth with Mr Semple. And, um, and they had the first parade right through Perth. And from then on, they followed that through. And we both got married, obviously, in the um, September in 1958. And it was the first time they'd ever run out of hymn books. So, and we had a little guard of honour, both of the boys' brigade on one side and the girls' club on the other. When I was first married, and I must say in those days, we used to save up for our glory box Everything was thinking of marriage and, um, and of course, being mothers and good housewives. That was the <laughs> uh, important. For 18 months, um, we moved and lived in a flat at Mount Lawley, renting, and then we saved and moved into 38 Birdwood Street in North Inaloo. And we had newspapers at the windows too, you know, because to start off, and that was worth, um, that was a land and package deal for uh, 4,000 pound. And yeah, and that was pretty 
new amongst the bushes, yeah. I ended up having um, four, three boys and a daughter. And um, unfortunately, years later, I ended up being a sole parent, yes, of the four of them. And I had to become the breadwinner, yep. Um, and life was different. We had all had picket fence and then we used to put gates, you know, in each side. And we used to, the lady next door used to run in and get her hair curled by me and then the other one used to bring the little one in and they'd play together. Yeah. It was a, the whole of my life from moving into Muriel Avenue was very, very, very close community. We helped each other, knew each other and yeah, it was a very, very happy, happy atmosphere. Yeah, I've stayed in this area since I was 12 years old and, um, and I love it and I walk at Jack Adder all the time. And um, yeah, it's been a really, really happy community. Um, with my poetry, I started writing at 14. Uh, when I was on my own, um, my daughter wanted to be an engineer. So my, I was, by that time, I'd been to a lot of night schools over my time, learning all different things. And I was a shorthand typist. And so when Nadia wanted to be an engineer, she was the youngest. I um, didn't have enough to pay for it to go to uni, so I sold over 20,000 of my poems along with my job and had a subsidised to becoming an engineer. And so now, um, I love, love people, probably a weakness in one way, but I love just handing out now little small laminated poems to everyone I meet. And I just love the fact I bring happiness to others. I do it because the feedback and some of the people who say I couldn't have gone on if I hadn't have got that and that nurses and things and doctors everyone in this area has had a poem and walking around the lake I'd give them out to new mothers to anyone at all that's you know I'd just like to make happy and I also won a mini moke in 1972 national winner all over Australia out of 45,000 entrants my five minutes of fame Kindred keepsake. I, my mother lived till 99. I wanted to make her feel special. So I wrote a, a historical book, all in poetry. And it ended up, I thought it was going to sit on the floor. Mum got 200 copies, but 147 sold in four weeks, word of mouth. And it's all to do with how, in the early days, in late 1800s, where my family came from there, across the Nullarbor with children in camel train and I've followed it up through and here and all in Aloo and the church. The church played a big part in our, our young days because that's all that was really there. When I wrote the book Kindred Keepsake which ended up being put in all the libraries which quite amazed me. Um, uh, this is a particular one on Muriel Avenue which I'll just write, read a few lines. To 6 Muriel Avenue, a lovely brick house went, three bedrooms, state house, to reside and rent. 18 shillings a week, so excited were we, never having known such security and luxury. Our semi-trailer bus service, navy and yellow, travelled on Scarborough Beach Road, so narrow. No road existed in Muriel Avenue, you only sand. Four houses in the block, midst uncleared land. To Jack Adder Lake, our brothers would take their canoe, bury them in the reeds, exact spot they only knew. Saved carrying it home, easy access to regain, return to the spot, dig up and happily float again. Fruit laden mulberry tree, all did eat and raid. From fruit boxes with wheels, go-karts were made. Marbles, football, cricket, odd go ging or Shanghai. November the 5th, Guy Fawkes, hoisted on high. Great competitions, great competitions, bonfire and fireworks galore, interaction, entertainment and fun did reassure.